Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and in this video I'm going to be talking with you on three reasons why I believe that this Forbidden and Limited list that we have just received is actually just absolutely fucking terrible. Objectively speaking, and in my opinion, I should preface this. This is looking at this objectively and purely from my opinion and from my perspective on how I'm looking at this. But ultimately, we've had this ban list spoiled to us for almost a week at this point. It's been like five or six days. And we've had a lot of time to think about and digest what this list is doing to the format and to the game going forward, going into what we presume to be our Nationals format. This will definitely be the list that is legal for Maximum Crisis at YCS Denver and YCS Pittsburgh. Uh, so it's definitely something that we're going to be stuck with for a little while. But So, objectively speaking, there are three huge issues I have with this list. Now, there are definitely more issues that I have with the list than just these three. But these are the three biggest things in my mind. Just absolutely, just cannot, I cannot get over the fact that this is what we're having to deal with as far as the Forbidden Limited list that we have been given by the company that's meant to be balancing the game using this Forbidden Limited list. Henceforth, I'm going to be referring to this as a ban list just for the uh, sake of saving my own breath uh, and because everyone refers to it as a ban list. It's only referred to as a Forbidden Limited list by the company themselves. Everybody else, the community, colloquially, refers to it as a ban list and uh, so anyway let's just uh, jump straight into why I think that this ban list is absolutely terrible three reasons why in fact the first reason I believe this list is not so great is because of the incredibly minor hits that it provided to anything in the format the only real hit that we received on this ban list was a semi limit to Zodiac Rat Pierre which honestly doesn't actually do a lot if anything this hit was actually very harsh but also very little in terms of what it actually did to the overall arcing like problem that Zodiac Beasts implements into the format. Now, I say it was a really harsh hit, an overly harsh hit, in the essence of Zodiac Rat Pier was not necessarily the problem. It wasn't necessarily the problem at all. The entire Zodiac engine that you use is actually just incredibly fair. You end with a Dryden, you end with an Emerald. It's just very good at generating advantage. It's very good at gathering resources. But that's not a fault of the Zodiac cards themselves and not a fault of Rap here at all. In fact, the only real fault with anything going on was with the insane interaction that Zodiac Beasts had with Elder Entity Norden. If anything should have been hit on this list, it definitely should have been Elder Entity Norden being banned. That would have curved Zodiac's performance a lot better than the semi limit of Rap Pierre did. The semi limit of Rat Pierre literally lasted in the minds of the community as the killing blow to Zoo for about two and a half hours. We looked at the list, we saw the semi limit of Rat Pierre, and we were like, oh my god, Zoo's dead. And then we actually thought about it and it was like, wait, all of the fusion substitute combos still work with two rats. And all of the rat combos still work. They just become two card combos in some places where they were one card combos. Well, a lot of one card combos still exist. The reason that I say the semi-limit of Rat Pier was a little bit too harsh was that the semi-limit of Rat Pier actually just forces the deck into more of a pure oriented focus and takes away all of the synergy that the Rat Pier engine had with other decks in the format that could have gotten boosts from Rat Pier existing at three. If you wanted to hit Zoo, the biggest thing you could have done to curb their performance, as I already said, was to ban Elder Entity Norton. Elder Entity Norton has been this weird stigma. It's had this weird stigma in the uh, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Where it constantly fuels near-infinite loops or FTK combos, but those have been so inconsistent and few and far between and fragile in the past that it hasn't really been that big of an issue warranting Norton's banning. The only real use Norton has been getting is to be a one-card, you know, tutorable toolbox with instant fusions in your deck. Could be a one-card rank four, could be a one-card synchro play, a good little bit of recovery, you know, something to allow you to have one-card follow-up plays and actually engage in, in player interaction, engage in the depth of the game state, you know, extend game states, make games more, you know, lasting and longevitous and stuff like that and make them more interactive. That was the main thing that Norden had going for it for the past, like, 16 months. Uh, but most recently, the interaction that Zodiac Beasts had with Lunalite Black Sheep, which then had interactions with Fusion Substitute being able to search it, 
which Fusion Substitute then being able to summon Norden and have an insane interaction with Norden because you could just put the Norden back into your extra deck off the Fusion Substitute to draw a card. That was where the unfairness lied. This format was actually really fun and really fair. Between YCS Seattle and YCS Atlanta, this format was incredibly fair, incredibly fun. It wasn't anything stressful. It wasn't anything extraneous. The Fusion Substitute combo caught on after YCS Atlanta. And the Fusion Substitute combo, implementing Norden into the main combo play of the Zodiac Beast deck, is what caused the problem to accelerate. And it caused the format to basically just become really not fun. Really unfair. The person who went first and was playing Zodiacs and opened the Lunalite combo, in some way, shape, or form, was at such a huge advantage over the opponent because you drew three cards. And you could easily extend that to draw five cards. There's combos now with right at two that exist that let you draw seven cards going through three fusion substitutes. Rat Pierre was not the problem. The Zodiac Beast cards, while very consistent and very potent in terms of what they do, they are only really as good as the ending boards that they're able to put up and protect with traps. The ending board of Dryden plus Emerald and getting you know a searched whip tail and a draw off Emerald, those aren't really that problematic if you actually think about it objectively. You could actually play through those a fair bit. Those are actually pretty simple. The problem lies with the traps that are behind it. The dimensional barriers, the solemn strikes, the lost winds, the mirror forces, all those cards that exist behind that board of those two very simple monsters are what really causes the problem. And so when you implemented the Norden play and the Fusion Substitute play into the Zodiac deck, you implemented ways to dig for more of those defensive cards. You implemented a way to draw three, to draw five, to draw seven, and end with Dryden plus Emerald, and you've drawn three between three and seven new cards. And that's where it becomes unfair. The inclusion of Elder Entity Norden is what caused this to absolutely just get blown out of proportion. And it should have been hit long before Rat Pierre was, because Rat Pierre at three was splashable in so many decks and actually had true synergy. There were some decks where you would just play Rat Pierre so you could go into Dryden and Emerald and reset your resource pool and it would kind of carry you a bit and it wouldn't really have synergy with your archetype. But then there were other decks like Fire Fist Zodiac, Yosinju Zodiac, the Perform Pal Zodiac deck where I'm literally using Rat Pierre to search two scales. Like, there were other decks like that that had true synergy, where you would start with a zoo play, and it would transition into your other engine, or you would start with your other engine, and it would transition into a zoo play. And those decks were so much fun and so innovative for the game. Now those don't really exist with Rat Pirate 2. The only deck that really exists is the Pure Zoo deck, because that's the deck that can abuse the Fusion Substitute, and Norden plays the most. So that's the first thing that I have a problem with about this ban list, is that the hit to Rat Pierre was incredibly harsh, but not against Zoo. It was harsh against literally any innovation that could have been done into the format to make Zoo a splashable engine in other decks. The problem comes from Norden, and Norden, at this point, it's definitely time to go. I think that Norden has been great for the game for the time that it existed, but it's definitely overstayed its welcome. Once the degeneracy of what it generates starts becoming a mainstay staple in the best deck of the format, that's when it's time to actually, you know, deal with it and actually hit the card. But anyway, that's one reason why this list is absolutely terrible, and I've been talking about this for a long time, so this video might actually be a little bit longer than I expected it to be. The second problem I have with this list is how long it took to come to us for it to do as little as it did. We waited almost seven months for this ban list. We waited like six months and 25 days. It was literally a hair under seven months. And... While some people would argue we didn't need a ban list because the game itself was progressing as a ban list and invalidating other decks, that is, you know, a nice romantic way to look at it, but the pure essence of the day, at the end of the day, is that when that's happening, that's because you have a rampant power creep in your game. If X deck has invalidated the deck before it because of how good it is, and then no ban list hampers the deck, but another deck comes out in the future, that causes that deck to be invalidated? Looking at you, ABC. ABC invalidated an entire slew of decks before it, and then ABC itself was invalidated by Zodiac. That means you just have out-of-control power creep going through your, uh, through your game and through your format, and that just makes it even harder for certain players that like to remain 
casual, but still, you know, like to play with friends and go to locals and stuff, that makes it even harder for those players to compete. Now, I'm a competitive-oriented player, but I do love playing me some Table 500 decks at times. I love playing Rogue options, I love doing that because it's refreshing. What's not refreshing is when you literally are getting forced out of the game and forced out of those options to play them because of how fast the game is progressing at such a rapid rate. Power creep has always been a big problem in Yu-Gi-Oh! because of the fact that Konami always has to update their previous sales because they, like, they always have to outdo them. They always have to raise the bar of, like, each deck's power level so that they can continue to sell products because this is one of the few TCGs that allows you to play everything. From the day this day, from the day this game came out, you were able to play cards from day one in 2017. And that's something that not a lot of other TCGs have. But because of that, they have to keep one-upping themselves, one-upping their archetypes that they make in order to keep selling product. When that starts becoming the norm and that starts becoming how the formats progress, rather than ban lists, you know, putting some things in check and then other decks taking their place because they're of a similar power level or maybe just a tiny bit better, that's when you get out of control power creep. And that's what we've really been expressing and experiencing over the past uh, couple of months, like the past six months, have been just rampant with power creep. Just absolutely. You just, you cannot look at this game and tell me that it operates anywhere near on the same capacity as it did at last year's Nationals. At last year's Nationals, you'd easily be able to grind games out and do things. You were playing Extra Deck Monarchs against BA, against Pendulums, against Demise Cosmo, or Fire King Cosmo. Like, the state of the game then versus now is nowhere near the same. Now, matches, you'll be lucky if a match, an entire match, makes it to, like, turn 7. You'll be lucky if that's the case, because games end so quickly. Games end so quickly because of how rampant the power creep is, and that's just a huge problem. We waited 7 months for a ban list that did almost nothing as far as how it's going to address the game, and the problem is, is that because we've waited so long, the ban list really has this weird issue that it's gotten itself into of it has to be very heavy-handed in order to even fix the issues. For example, if they had outright banned Zodiac Beasts, then we would have just stepped back a format. We would have been back to last November. It would have been ABC, Mermail, Paleozoic, uh, Totally Awesome Heroes, and uh, GoFu Metal Foes. We would have been back to that. It would have just been the quickest rewind. So then they would have had to hit those. And we would have gone back again. It would have been the exact same thing that happened in early 2014. In September of 2013, they had the Dragon Ruler format. Once they just went out of their way to completely kill the Dragon Ruler deck after it had been out for six months, in the very beginning of 2014, what happened? The format rolled back to the two decks that were the best decks before Dragon Rulers were printed, and that was Mermail and Firefist. So what did Konami have to do on their next ban lists? They had to hit those decks, because they did not perform any actual meaningful hits to Mermail or Firefist beforehand. They were focusing only on Dragon Rulers because that was the problem. So, what you ended up with is you ended up with a just weird state of the game where it takes two steps forward and then takes a step backwards and then has to take another step backwards before it can start moving forward again. So, like, it's this really weird situation. So, the fact that the ban list took this long to get to us means that if it continues to do this in the future, we're going to have a lot more of this instance of where the ban list is not coming out anytime soon and we're just going to have power creep upon power creep upon power creep just shaping what the game becomes rather than formatted hits. And that's the big issue that I have, is that I hate when things are invalidated by power creep because that's just a huge just cash-grabbing move. That's all that is. And that's not something that works to balance your game in any way, shape, or form. That works to make it rampant and out of control. And that's a huge problem. But the last thing that I have to say about why this list is terrible is that more changes on this list were made to push new product being released than were made to balance the format. If we take a look at this list, there were 13 total changes that were made, right? There were 13 changes that were made in total. Six of those changes were hits, whether they be light love taps all the way to outright bannings. The other seven changes were cards coming off the list to push new product coming out. Specifically, Duelist Saga, which coincidentally comes out the day this ban list goes into effect. Coincidence? Not at all. It's, it's just 
insane to me. We waited seven months for a list that did almost nothing, but more of the list was used as a promotional product than it was to balance the game. That's a big issue I have. Now, if we look at the hits that were made, Kieran was banned, the Tyrant Neptune was banned, Vandy's Emptiness was banned, Rat Pierre went to two, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber went to two, and Max C went to one. Now, arguably, those hits didn't do anything to actually balance the game out because of the aforementioned thing that I talked about where Norden is the problem, not Rat Pierre. And Max C being at one turns it into a very sacky card that means that if your opponent was lucky enough to be, you know, one of the 15% chances that they could open Max C and they're going second, congratulations, they win. Have a cookie. Like, arguably, the hits that were made to this list did not even really balance the format that much. And arguably, Sangin is not being used to push new product because Sangin's Errata was released back in the le second wave of the Legendary Dex thing that they did, which came out, I think, a couple of months ago, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. So, if we're being generous, and we're saying that Sangin is not being used to promote product, that is still six hits versus six unbannings to promote Duelist Saga. Brianak, Future Fusion, Brain Control, Rescue Cat, uh, Imperial Order, all of these things are just being done to promote Duelist Saga's release, and then the semi-limit of Wisdom Eye Magician is being used to promote the Pendulum Evolution, or the Pendulum, like, is it Pendulum Evolution? Yeah, I think it's Pendulum Evolution. That set that was a starter deck, that one, that we get the new Pendulum Magicians in that comes out in June, it's being used to promote that. So six of these unlimits and these unbannings are being used to promote product, whereas six hits were made to the list that didn't even do anything to really balance the format, because as we've already talked about, Rat wasn't the problem, the Norden plays still exist, they're still just as insane as they were before, Max C becomes really sacky, and they've banned Floodgates, they've banned Emptiness, and they've banned Kirin, which was essentially a Floodgate, it just really stagnated the format, and they've unbanned different Floodgates! They have unbanned Imperial Order, which is just infinitely better than Vanity's Emptiness, because the game is so heavily reliant on spells at this current point in time, In, oh, I just don't understand. You've taken a few steps forward, and you've taken more steps backwards. You banned Kirin, great, that's one step forward. You banned Emptiness, great, that's a step forward. You preemptively banned Tyrant Neptune, that's like, we'll give that half a step. You limited Maxi, which was basically a step backwards, because Maxi is, while really unbalanced and unfair, it acts as a natural check to the format, and now it's just actually just really sacky being at one. So that's a problem, that's a step backwards. And then you've, uh, <laughs> you've limited Imperial Order, which is monumentous amounts of steps backwards. Imperial Order is so much more unfair than Vanity's Emptiness ever was because the outs to Imperial Order exist in much lesser quantity than Emptiness does. You know why? Because the outs to Imperial Order are usually going to be outed by Imperial Order itself. MST, Twin Twister, Cosmic Cyclone, those commonly played back row outs that would have been out to Emptiness, those are not outs to Imperial Order unless they're chaining directly to it. Like, holy shit. That's an issue. The errata on Imperial Order makes it to where you have to pay 700 during either player standby phase. Mandatory. You can't just turn it off. This does not change how broken this card is. This card is actually just insane, still. And it's going to be a huge problem in the format as long as it exists. I'm hoping that this is another Snatch Deal situation where Konami realizes that they've unbanned this card, and holy shit, it's actually still just too good, and it gets put back onto the ban list. I mean, who in their right mind looks at a card, like Imperial Order, is like, I remember that card, remember how fair that card used to be? Let's change it slightly, and then let's reintroduce it to the game. Who the fuck says these things? Nobody sane, and nobody in their right mind says these things. I can tell you that for damn sure. But other than that, like, literally, like I said, six of these hits, and six of these changes, it's literally an equal number of, we hit six things, we hit six things, and then we're unbanning seven things, six of which directly correlate with new product that is either coming out the day the ban list goes out or in the near future. So, like, goddamn. And this is also insinuated as our nationals list because they went out of their way to semi-limit Wisdom Eye, meaning that we are going to have no new list in theory before the Pendulum Evolution stuff comes out, which means that we're probably not getting another ban list until Link Format hits. So welcome to your Nationals format, where we've got Zoo, Zoo, 
Paleo, zoo, more zoo, stuff like that. And it's not even Splashable Zoo anymore because Rat Pier is at two. You can't even play these cool ideas, these cool deck ideas, because normal summoning rat isn't enough anymore. But anyway, those are just my opinions. I'd like to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and all that sort of nonsense. And I'm actually curious to see how much uh, I get butchered as far as uh, as far as people's opinions differing from my own. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as I've already said. Be sure to like and subscribe to see more content. And check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly and support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so, as well as it gets you access into a monthly giveaway that happens at the end of every month. At the end of this month, I'm giving away a couple of boxes of Duel Saga. That set that the ban list promoted sales for. That one. But I'm giving away a couple of sealed boxes of those to the people on my Patreon just to say thank you for supporting me and all that sort of nonsense. But other than that, if you're looking to acquire cards that I talk about in videos or play in certain dual videos and you want to directly, or indirectly rather, support the channel, then definitely check out Second Chance Gaming's website which is also linked in the description down below. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far. So if you're looking to acquire anything, buy or sell, whatever, definitely go check out them and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that... That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. Again, let me know what your thoughts are. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.